Welcome to Irish Seat Savers Association, situated in beautiful County Clare, near Loch Derg, in the Midwest of Ireland. Irish Seat Savers was founded by Anita Hayes in 1991 to conserve Ireland's fast disappearing horticultural heritage crops and its endangered heritage apple tree varieties. Today, in our orchards, we safeguard Ireland's full collection of over 180 uniquely Irish apple tree varieties. And in our public seed bank, we maintain the seed of over 600 heritage food crop varieties. Our mission is not only to conserve this precious genetic resource, but also to make it available to the public, thereby contributing to Ireland's biodiversity and food security. Over the years, we have developed an educational initiative, engaging schools with our work and providing short courses in organic gardening, seed saving, orchard management, beekeeping, and many other topics relating to sustainable living. Our 20-acre site also has a visitor trail aimed at raising awareness and providing an example of biodiversity and sustainable food production in action. Since 2019, we have partnered with a local wildlife rescue centre who recognise the habitats that our management of hedgerows, mixed woodlands and wildflower meadows have created. So far through this partnership we have released one kestrel which is now nesting on our site and numerous hedgehogs who we sometimes find hibernating in the straw mulch on our vegetable beds. In 2021 we were delighted to be nominated Ambassadors for Farming for Nature, a national initiative aimed at recognising and encouraging those farmers who take steps to becoming part of the solution. Being located in the west of Ireland, where the Gulf Stream off the Atlantic provides us with a mild, cool and wet maritime climate, poses its challenges for seed saving, soil care and weed management. This has meant that over the years we have trialled many varieties of crops and various soil care and weed management techniques in order to successfully grow and save seed. In addition to the challenging climate, the soil here is predominantly heavy clay soil, also known as minnit soil due to its tendency to be too wet to cultivate one minute and too dry and hard to cultivate the next. However, the beauty of clay soil is its fantastic ability to store nutrients and its capacity for producing beautiful crops when well cared for. Given this set of challenging conditions, soil care has been our primary focus and we have always grown our crops using organic principles. More recently, with increased understanding of the soil microbiome and its importance in plant health and productivity, we have adopted and adapted an approach promoted by Niels Caulfield in the UK, which is proving effective for us in our specific conditions. As we are primarily looking after the soil microbiome, which is a living organism and needs care in order to thrive, we follow five principles for our soil care decisions. In order of importance, these guiding principles are living root for as long and as often as possible, cover soil with residues or living plants, minimize disturbance, maximize diversity in rotations and plantings, feed soils with organic matter between crops. Hi, I'm Tristan Leon Hudd. I'm the head gardener here in Irish Seed Savers and we're going to go around the garden and have a look at how we put these principles of soil care into practice in different situations. Here we are in Inish Glass. It's mid-January. Uh, the weather is somewhat cold. In Ireland it never gets really that cold most of the time so we don't have months of uh, snow covering so the things do still keep growing for most of the winter. Here we had Luan Propang peas and runner beans and a lot of other different crops in the summer. As they came out we sowed various green manures until October. In October we sowed the whole lot with phacelia. Normally around October if we sow it at the right time, the phacelia will stay quite small over the whole winter and keep the weeds down and protect the soil for the whole winter. However, this year it was quite warm in the autumn, so the, the phacelia grew a little bit too tall. So once it does that, it starts to collapse and leaves a lot of gaps then uh, where weeds can start coming through. Uh, this is chickweed and field speedwell. And if we left this for the whole winter, 
the whole bed would be covered in, in, in weeds coming into the spring. So to stop the weeds from taking over, we will then use hay, uh, a straw mulch that we cover it straight onto, put straight onto the phacelia. Uh, that usually smothers the weeds and leaves us with a nice clean bed coming into the spring. If the weeds have established a bit too much and start pushing through the hay, we also then cover it with plastic as a last resort. Essentially, all these practices mean that we have living root in the soil for as long as possible. Uh, if we don't have living root over the whole winter, we have a mulch covering the soil. Uh, this stops the weeds, but also protects it from the elements. Uh, we get a lot of rain here, which tends to uh, be quite heavy on the soil. And uh, it means that coming into the spring, we can minimize cultivation. And uh, we just pull this back, right back, and we've got bare soil. We can then just use the uh, broad fork to do very, very light cultivation. And we have a bed that's ready for transplants without disturbing the soil structure that we're really trying to uh, protect with everything that we do. We're here in Inish Glass Main Polytunnel. On this bed here, we have an example of Phacelia green manure growing in the bed. Um, the aim of having living root growing in the soil as much and as often as possible uh, is so that the bacteria stays active in the soil. Uh, when we dig some of this Phacelia up, we can see that the bacteria is actively feeding off the root exudates as the plant is growing and in that way it's creating soil, uh, soil structure. If we didn't have a green manure in this soil, the bacteria would tend to go uh, dormant after a while and then in the spring we'd have to uh, get it active again. So ideally living root in the soil as much as possible really keeps the soil humming. So essentially all of our decisions that we make are guided by these principles of living root, of covered soil, of minimal disturbance, of diversity and of feeding with composts are aimed at creating a lovely soil structure, a very healthy soil that will grow healthy plants. So here we have a bed that we've been using these practices on and we can see there's worms there already on the surface and essentially from a very from a very heavy clay soil which uh, can be very difficult to work over a number of years we end up with a soil structure that's incredibly crumbly that really supports the microbiome and in that way we create very healthy crops that grow well, are disease resistant, and can produce healthy uh, seed. So here we are again in Inish Glass Polytunnel. Uh, on this side, we have a bed of red winter radish, uh, which are quite unusual. We can look at this bed as an example for diversity of crops. So in the summer, we had runner beans, we had tomatoes, we had broad beans in this bed and as they came out, as they were harvested, we then followed that with a succession of uh, buckwheat, then with a succession of phacelia and once we were ready for the transplant of the radish into the beds, we put in a nice layer of, co of garden compost. We worked that in very lightly just on the surface and then transplanted our radish into it. Uh, so over a short period of time, we've had quite a succession of crops and we're really trying to keep diversity in the soil moving all the time. Here we're in the composting area, also in Inish Glass. We use three different types of compost uh, for keeping the soil healthy. Uh, one is garden waste, another one is farm manure, farmyard manure, and another one is composted wood chip. Uh, so here we do all our composting uh, of the green waste from the garden. We always have a store of uh, straw, which was used for uh, covering the beds as a mulch. We usually bring that over to the composting area and we mix that in with a green 50-50, half green, half brown. 
So once we've built the, the compost heap for about three months, we then give it a good turn with the tractor and put it into a new heap. And we let that sit then uh, to compost for about six months. Initially, it goes through a very hot phase. It goes up to 65 degrees Celsius, and then it cools down and stays at a steady 15 degrees for, for about six months. This is an example of where, where it, uh, this was turned about three months ago. Um, so it still has some of the brown material, which hasn't been fully composted yet. And uh, over here we have the heap, the, the compost heap that we are currently using on the garden. So this will be over a year old at this stage. We've been using it on the garden for a number of months for the, this whole growing season. And it's fully composted. It's a stable humus uh, and it really it really helps support the bacteria uh, in the soil we're here still in Inish glass uh, this is the, our area where we do our uh, farmyard manure composting so we're lucky to have a local farmer only a few miles away who still keeps cows on a straw bed which is not done so much anymore in, in Ireland um, and we get that, uh, that manure from her once a year. So she delivers it over, she delivers it with, over with a trailer and it, it comes in a, quite a raw form. It's been taken out of her barn and put into a stockpile for a few months. Then she brings it over here, which effectively gives it a turn. So then we just simply stockpile it here, cover it and leave it for, again for three months and that composts a little bit more. So effectively that's had two turns and then we give it one more turn with the tractor and uh, pile it up into a windrow, which we keep quite narrow and uh, not as tall as the garden waste compost because it tends to develop a dead zone in the middle because it's a much heavier material. We keep it in a windrow and uh, in slightly smaller and effectively we still get a good compost, which tends to be much, much more full of worms and is much, much denser in nutrients. So we use this uh, for feeding crops, which uh, are heavier feeders. So we're in Newland here, which is the third part of uh, the gardens where we grow for seed. We also grow the apple trees on this part of the site. Every year we have a lot of uh, apple tree prunings from the orchards and we also have a lot of uh, prunings from hedges and other parts of the site. So we get a wood chipper in once a year, we chip that and put it into a big pile and then we compost that by turning it regularly over the year. It takes the longest to break down out of the three forms of compost, but at the end when it's, when it's fully finished, it's a wonderful carbon rich and fungally dominated material that we can use on the land. So here we are in Anita's garden, uh, where we have another example of the, these principles that we use to develop a good healthy soil structure. So in this bed, we started two years ago with digging in manure and covering it with soil and growing a crop of kohlrabi. Then after that came out, we straight away sowed phacelia as a green manure that stayed in for most of the winter. In the spring, we put some compost straight on top of the phacelia. Then we put mulch, a thick mulch of hay on top of that. And we then put in uh, transplanted peas uh, straight through the mulch that we'd grown in modules. And then once they'd grown through the whole season, we took them out. We transplanted the roots, uh, parsnip roots into the bed. We did decide to take the mulch off at this stage just because rodents tend to like uh, parsnips here in Ireland and we just didn't want to have the mulch uh, near, the, near, the, near the parsnips. So what we have done though to still keep the soil protected, we've put on this uh, horticultural fleece 
to stop the elements, uh, mainly the rain, because we have so much rain here from really battering the soil. So if we look under here, this is the soil that we now have after two years of this approach. And uh, we can take a look again with a spade. And again, we've really managed to achieve a very good soil structure, which really supports very, very healthy crops. And this year from the, from the peas that we grew here, we really managed to get some beautiful seeds. So through this approach, again, we've managed to cover living root. We've managed to keep the soil well covered We've had maximum diversity. We've also uh, minimized soil disturbance. Essentially, we haven't dug it for two years and we've also fed it well with compost. And the result of that is this lovely soil structure again that really supports the soil microbiome.